that's, but that's one of the problems we've run into, is that the bus companies are saying, wait a minute, why should we make the, because it's really the bus companies are going to be making the expense if we don't even know if we're going to be, you know, be here in a couple of years. So those are legitimate questions we're working on them with. And we brought in some experts from all over the country and had some very, very in-depth conversations about how it could be done. And my thought is if you're the first one to step up and say, let's do it, I think more money will flock to you. And I'll also say that one of the things in the House right now, one of the, the proposals they're working on is incentives uh, for conversion of fleet vehicles. I think that's going to be kind of the future. So I think that, again, it's definitely worth at least taking a, a more serious look at than maybe it was a year ago. Okay, um, thank you. Question back. Yes. Um, Mike Slates, I'm a resident here, I'm an educator here, I'm a coach, and I'm also a graduate of Fort Sherry High School. Um, and I wanted to remind the board members and our administration that there is some precedent here. Back in the early 80s, uh, there was some large cuts made. I still remember Ralph Hoseman coming over the announcements and cutting the golf team and cutting the cross country team. I personally was upset by that. I wanted to play golf. I'm a golf coach now. But, uh, and maybe Mr. Johnston could, could even uh, add some more to this, those guys made the right decision because our primary role and our primary priority to the taxpayers of this area is academic, not athletic. I love Friday Night Lights. I love Fort Cherry basketball. I love Fort Cherry wrestling. I love all our athletics. But we seem to be making academic cuts when it doesn't seem that we've exhausted a lot of the other cuts. We cut JV sports back then. Uh, all JV sports were gone. Boom. We had varsity. We had junior high. Our varsity basketball teams, they actually combined schedules with the boys and girls teams so that there was one bus going to away games and coming back. Um, we can be creative. Maybe somebody should call Ralph Lofton. He still lives on 4th Street. Um, and ask him, uh, you know, some of those things. But, but we can get creative. And, and what upsets me is, is there was a comment made at the last board meeting that I want to make big cuts. I don't want to make little cuts. But when we cut academics, we're making big cuts. And maybe we need to make a lot of little unnecessary cuts to save academics. That's our primary role, and that's our primary duty to the taxpayers of this district. I'll go with one more out of the box idea here. Um, in, in a business, when you look for revenue, because that's what I'm hearing from Paul, it's a revenue, you need to look for more income. And I always think of the school district, we've paid for this structure, but we only use it a short period of the day. Is there any way that we could utilize, rent out, have social, sports things, for one year, to make it a custom bait sale or whatever that the community can come to and maybe support so that we can put those funds back in. in. And there might be liability reasons why you can't do that, but I see the gymnasium being empty. I think we need to explore any kind of liability. I'm sorry? I think we should explore any idea like that. Hundreds I know to thousands and thousands I agree. eventually solve problems. All good suggestions to think about. Hi, um, I'm Cynthia Gaskill. Um, I'm a graduate here, like Mr. Slates. Um, my son is in um, ninth grade. He'll be in tenth grade next year. Um, and I basically, I, I'll address this to Senator Solibay and to Representative White, because I have two concerns here: time and politics. The time frame for the school board to get the budget passed. Um, we have to get it passed. And the longer we wait, if this goes out till October, like it did two years ago, for any reason, whether it's politics or anything. The school's up the creek because at that point they're not going to be able to rearrange schedules for kids and teachers. So we need you to be very, very concerned about that time frame. The other concern is politics. And basically, I have to say, I've heard you be very political tonight. <laughs> um, Representative White, when you, you come in and complain about the Republican governor and call him a robber baron, that's your opinion, and that's fine. And I'm sure if he, we got him here, he'd call you guys a robber baron, too, or something equally off the other side of the spectrum. But I do not expect you to be political. I don't expect you to go back there and um, just be Democrats and take on the Republicans and let the Democrats take their side of the 
spectrum and the Republicans take their side. I expect you to make a compromise in our favor if you have to. And because time frame is extremely important to us, because this isn't a political issue, this is an education issue for, excuse me, my mouth is dry. <laughs> this is an education issue. And we really expect you to go back and focus on what your citizens need, not on um, any political any and I political think we goals. all attempt to do that, but sometimes I know the worst that. it is whenever you've got a wall that doesn't want to cooperate yeah. or doesn't I want know to that, negotiate, but that makes it tough. And then we don't want to give in to things that, that are going to harm or be hurt. I know that. And we fought against our own government because he wanted to raise taxes, and we didn't want to see taxes raised because we could do things to them. So some, and you're right, I don't want the... the, the but the, I don't the, want the, you to be the immovable wall either. Right. That's it. Yeah. Both of you have to, and, and it probably won't happen until you get down to the wire, yeah. but save what you can for us. But we need that time frame. Sure. Well, I, I want to make something really clear, and, and, and really this is a, a math issue more than anything else. You know, we it, it's in the House, the Republicans have a 112 to 91 majority. They need 102 votes to pass any bill. Mm -hmm. They don't need me. My, to, mathematically speaking, to, to, to their priority list, my opinion just doesn't count. My vote doesn't matter. And I hate to admit that. But, I mean, that's the reality. Yeah. In the Senate, wait a minute, in the Senate, it's 30 to 20. So, again, you know, if Tim can have the, the greatest ideas in the world, but if they're not, they're, they're not listening to what we're saying. And that's the problem that we're running into is, so we're, we're stuck in a situation where we know what, the, you know what we want the priorities to be. We're 100% we're opposed to these cuts, these proposed cuts. How do we make ourselves relevant? And, the, uh, and unfortunately, this, it's the, the politics, the sausage making of this, that's our job. And we, you know, we've got to go in there and sometimes make some noise, come in here, make some noise, make people aware of what's going on. And because you know, the, the, these proposals, my name's not on them anywhere, Tim's name's not on them anywhere. I don't think we're going to ever vote for them. So we've got to make sure, the only way, and it was touched on here, we've got to get everybody else involved. And, and so, and I understand, you know, it would be great if we could be here and say, the governor has reached out to us and has asked for our input. Or the, 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 the Republican leadership on either side has asked for our input. We haven't had that. Every vote we've had so far in the five months since this session has started has been a, they have voted, and I'm, and I'm sorry, this is just reality, and, and I mean, it's just, it is what it is. They have voted lockstep, party line, every single vote. They have cut off debate on issues where we had amendments that have been removed. They have taken away our ability to debate them openly on the floor, on, on PCN. We're running out of options here to get the message out. So if i got to come to Fort Cherry uh, you know, Elementary Cafeteria and do it, that's where I'm going to do it. You know what? I don't care. You're supposed to be a politician, so take your Republican colleagues out to lunch. Convince them to vote your way. Um, convince them about Fort Cherry's parents. Convince them. I mean, that's what we pay you to do. Is a just work with, with them You're and right. just get them to buy and, in. And for the most part, there's extremes on each side. I know there are. And, and a majority of us, fortunately, try to see the middle. And, and I think what you're saying can happen. I, I don't necessarily agree with everything you just, just said, but I do agree with some of the things you said, because there is a reality to it. But you're right. It's all about building consensus, building relationships. Yes. And that's what, that's what many of us attempt to do. But sometimes, you know, sometimes it, it doesn't always work that way. And, and I know He's experienced it sometimes on the other end. I, I know, I think I have been able to make some consensus with some folks and get a few things done. So there is a give and take, but you're That's right. That's good. I think Don't lose focus. And, and to, to, to give you a good example, um, there is, for example, one of the big issues I've been working on has been, and because it's related to schools and property taxes, there's been reassessment before, um, dealing with the, 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 the pending reassessment in Washington County, and because if we don't do it the right way, it could really cost taxpayers a lot of money. We've worked for a couple of years now on a package of bills that will tighten a lot of that up. In introducing those bills, I deliberately went to three Republican colleagues that I have relationships with, and to Representative Brandon Newman, who took Tim's old seat in the legislature, and we said, let's do this bipartisan, let's do it together. And you know what, you can do that on something like reassessment reform because it's not controversial. But what we have seen is when it comes to these big issues like the budget, we trust me, we talk to our Republican colleagues every day. 
We do go out to lunch. We go out to dinner. We talk. But so far what I've seen in five months in this new session, when push comes to shove, we have never been able to convince them one time. So, you know, we're, we're, we're playing it at every single angle. We don't want to be combative. We want to work together. But they have their constituencies. We have ours. And we've got to fight for ours any which way we know how. Well, I don't think that there's uh, any shortage of these types of meetings going on. And all members of the legislature are going to be hearing from citizens that are concerned about education. And I don't think that's a, a party issue. There's not Republicans are interested in education. Democrats are interested in education. And um, <clears throat> we just need to find a way to close the gap presented by the lack of the stimulus funds and the fact that we've maybe been living on borrowed money for too long and we need to find ways to fill those gaps that, that we no longer have funding for. And there's going to be, what, what are some of the other priorities in terms of cutting? I know that um, education certainly for people in this room doesn't, uh, we don't want that on the table, but what are what are some other issues that can, or other well, some of big it ticket just, numbers? Some, yeah, some of it is just spreading out the pain a little bit more equitably. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of the things with uh, some of the cuts that he, or some of the um, benefit things that he's done with some of the uh, some of the tax related issues now on some of the business side of things we felt were a little bit lopsided. So again everybody understands there's got to be pain felt but just pay a little bit more equitable and that's what we're trying to do by shifting some of the some of that uh, benefit that he's done for certain uh, venues and make it equal to where we're at with the education. Okay, back there. Right there. Uh, my name is Mary Eiler. Uh, I'm a teacher at the high school. My question goes to our school board. Um, I understand our budgets are due at different times, so you guys are going to do this budget before we really know how much money we're going to get. If we get more money, like Mr. White alluded to, I believe, if that happens, which I hope it does, is there a guarantee that these furloughed teachers and these cut programs are going to return if that money does show up, even if we're into the school year and we say, oh, we're making it work with four math teachers, five less elementary teachers, and a little library, we're good. Like, is there a guarantee that that money is going to get put back and used for the education of our students into things that are important in our school? Well, the game's a guarantee, but... Okay, well, <laughs> what's the plan is to get that money we're going to let all these go and we have to make it work? Do I, I want I, to know? I think Chris and I are thinking the same thing. We're only two of nine votes. So, uh, in... in and I, and I got to be honest with you, they're nine individuals, they're, they're wonderful people, but I, I can never predict how that room is going to vote. I, I, I just can't. I, it's always different. But I know all nine of those individuals care very deeply about keeping teachers and, and what I call the front line on the front line. You know, and, um, to JL, Jaylee, her, her comment earlier. I mean, my kids were helped by the reading and recovery teacher. I did a fantastic job, turned two of my boys around 180. I, I know what a great program that is. I know I don't want to cut it. I know Mr. Watt doesn't want to cut it. I know none of the board members want to cut it. it the, the math program that you're doing, Terry, it's, it's been fantastic. The, you know, the, the new technology, I'm sure most people have no idea what we're even talking about, but what you're doing with the, the new software program, it's, it's fantastic. So, Nobody wants to cut any of that stuff. Um, but once the cuts are in place and money comes back, I can't guarantee you that that money will come back to, you know, dollar for dollar, back to the teacher cut. I, I just can't predict that. So, again, you know, it, 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 Pennsylvania tells us sooner, hey, this amount of money is coming in. But I mean, from the tea leaves that I've been reading, we would be lucky to get another quarter million to half million. So if I'm ready to check, and so it, it, it all depends on what they. I think whatever you see on Monday in the House Republican version of the, the actual bill, House Bill Number Whatever, I think you could safely look at that as the the new floor. You know what I mean? As, I think it's going to be more than what Corbett had. I can't see them putting a little bit more back in and then taking it back out again. From what, our, from what our leadership is saying today, and I just had a conversation before I come out, anywhere from trying to fill the gap of 50% of what the proposed things up to three quarters or, or, or better, 100% would be would be the uh, 
coup de gras, but I, I think anywhere between 50 to 3 quarters is, is very, very conceivable. And uh, if if we could negotiate, as you, as you were saying, working in there, and, and with your help, we may be able to get it to that, you know, to, to what you're losing, at least get, is getting that back. I mean, that, that's my goal, is to get it back uh, to what everybody's losing. Because we're, we're talking roughly on the basic ed side, you know, a little over uh, 500, or I think $600 million just uh, statewide. So let's use that as round numbers. We're looking at a $1.3 million deficit, and we get half of that $600,000 back. And again, that's, that's a, you know, um, if we get that back soon, I think that will be much more beneficial than if we get eight or $900,000 in July. Does that answer your question? If we get more money later, uh, I think the cuts will have been made, the programs will be in place, things will be started. Schedules be handed out to the students. You know, come August, September, adding staff at that point is, is much more difficult than if we can add it in June. Okay, thank you. Back there on the counter? Yeah, is there a school district gift charge? Uh, we get money taken away from every school district in the uh, state of Pennsylvania. Every school district. How is that done proportionally? Everybody saw anywhere from a 10 to 15 percent reduction across the board cut. Everybody, every school district, that's including the cities? Yes, at this point. But now they're looking at, we said some of the bills to re replenish some of that funding on there based on this one particular set of bills. But the percentage is I'm just noticing a big, big discrepancy, and you probably got it to discuss this before, I got it. But uh, it seems like the discrepancy between uh, Burgess Town, Savella, and Fort Cherry, they're all small schools, right? Fort Cherry is a small school. You've got three on the bottom here. You've got Mount Lebanon, Peters Township, Fox Chapel, all rich areas. They have less taken out than Fort Cherry. I, I just can't understand that. The, the I mean, it, it's not, it, you know, it's not <coughs> equally distributed. It should be equally distributed. Savella, they have less, probably less kids than you do. This is a residential area. My point in being is, is why isn't it a little bit more equal than what it is? Fort Cherry is named that. I understand the answer to that question. Because I have a friend who lives in Upper St. Clair, and his granddaughters go to Mount Lebanon. So I don't know whether it's applied to Mount Lebanon or Upper St. Clair. But he told me that um, like we're having 663,000 cuts from our budget. I think one of, because those areas are so affluent, they don't even get that much from the state. So if you don't get very much from the state, they don't have much to cut. If Fort Cherry is getting, in this proposal, getting cut 966000 Mount Lebanon is being cut 802000 So it's really not that much of a difference. The difference is they have a higher tax base, yeah. they have a higher overall budget. And as I said when I, when I was first explaining this, the, the formula you hit on it, the, the, it's the inequalities in the system that we've been trying to correct are being vaporized. And it, it's really disproportionately hurting small rural schools. In a district, yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You're 100 percent right, sir. In a district like that, I mean, the, the the numbers can be slightly skewed because we're a very small district. Our our funding was uh, what was it 100 thousand more than theirs? But the total cuts were 166 thousand more. But your, the size of their district is multi times so our local tax base. Well, yeah, their local tax base can afford to pay for more. So that's why they, they, it's less hurt for them, but financially. But, but also, we received subsidies for several years state in. We received a technology grant of, what, 150, 227,000 a year technology grant to implement the classroom of the future, uh, title money, reading recovery money. And that was the first money that was wiped out of the state budget. Well, what about Cecil Township? Yes, your question, Cecil. I live in Cecil. What's their uh, percentage? Uh, you know, I don't have that one on here because we only put a few on the list. It's somewhere in the middle. Um, it's not as it's not as dramatically low as Mount Lebanon. It's not as high as some of the others, mainly because Cannon Hill is a much bigger school district. Same thing, bigger base. But I mean, they have their own problems. I mean, they're they're growing faster than they can handle. Um, so they have a whole other. So stop there. Right. And so I mean, in those areas, those taxes are going up continually. So um, again, you know, it's it's. It's frustrating because I think we were on the right track as a result of costing out study, which you can get. We can provide it if anybody wants to see it. 
um, that we were getting towards getting more state funding to make it more equal, and now we've taken a, just an enormous step backwards at the expense of rural schools. Yeah, we're going to have to start. Let me speak on this just for a second. The problem is that you have, uh, uh, yeah, the residential uh, places, and most other places they have uh, industrial parks and stuff like that to help their school base out. Well, where's our industrial park? Yeah. Is there plans in the future to put one out and the return pipe line comes through here? Do you guys have any future plans? This $275 per household, it's hitting me hard. I'll tell you that much right now. It's going to hit everybody hard. Everybody's going to feel the, uh, we're talking about cutting back. I don't even like cutting back education. That's the last thing I want to with, with this $273 being taken out of my tax base already, which I pay over $1,000 uh, a year, it's up in mind a whole bunch, and that's something that nobody can afford. With everything else going up, food prices are going up, gas prices are going up, hopefully they'll go down again. We don't know. Just so there's no confusion, you, there's no $273 tax increase. Based on $1,000, you are looking at a $19 tax increase if we increase the taxes the maximum allowed by law. Which is 1.9%? 1.9 mils. Oh, mils, yeah. Right now we're at 114. So we've got the 115 point, 118 points. We've got Okay, well that's my fault. You have one this thing right here. You got uh, per household. That just shows what it would cost per household to make up the cuts. Oh, okay. And, and so that's, it was mainly just for information purposes. But, but, but still, I mean, you know, this is what I'm saying. We don't have an industrial base here to fall back on like South Bay it does, like, uh, I know Mount Lebanon may have some uh, industrial base, but they have more affluency. Uh, Washington County, same thing. Washington, you've got Washington, uh, you've got South, uh, South Franklin, North Franklin. They all have mall bases to help them out. We don't have much more. Is there any future plans to put an industrial park around the turnpike when it comes through? And that's, I mean, that's a private investment, but I can tell you that that, that number is exactly why I'm, I'm going to fight like crazy to make sure that this, this proposal doesn't become law. You just made my point. Okay, thanks. You know what? We have to start wrapping up. We have one more question. Melanie's back. Hi, my name is Melanie Nemec. I have a statement that I'm going to read from another concerned parent. She won't be here tonight. But the statement is from Leslie Salvini Baird. Leslie is a community resident. She's also a graduate of Fort Perry. She's a very active member of the PTA and very active within the school building itself. Um, Leslie was very involved a few years ago when a group of parents approached the school board about uh, affecting the class size. They had eliminated a teacher and the parents were concerned about the class size. Leslie was very involved in that. Uh, these are Leslie's concerns that she's asked me to share. As a concerned parent who has spent a lot of hours in reviewing our class sizes, etc., I would ask you to consider the following. She has a list of suggestions. I'll read through them. I know we don't have time to address each one, but I would at least like to mention them on her behalf. Number one, a return to half-day kindergarten. This is an option that numerous schools are doing, especially since this is not a requirement for the state of Pennsylvania. These will allow, this will allow two more teachers in the elementary center. Number two, an incentive for early retirement. These would be our highest paid positions, allowing for lower entry-level positions and salaries. Other state agencies, when these tough times come, will offer 30 years and out with benefits. Number three, when you are speaking of combining services, we should be combining salary expenses as well as sharing staffing with a VELA, with a VELA being required to help support the salaries. I have concerns of the nurse issues. As an RN myself, who has dealt with true emergencies, seconds count when you have a ratio of one to approximately 1,500 students. You are asking for something bad to happen. You have multiple children with life-threatening allergies. One second can mean the difference of life and death. There are a lot of children who take medications, which are dispensed by the nurse. Please also be aware there is a push for mandatory staffing ratios for nursing currently at the state level. And her last comment is, why are you cutting funding for reading recovery in Title I, but not considering a cut to the funding for the gifted program? The students who need help the most are being hurt. Leslie Baird. As I said, these are Leslie's concerns, they're not my concerns, but I did uh, promise her that I would share them with you. Thank you. Thank you, Melvin. All right. Um, you know what we're going to do to wrap up here? We're going to go down the line and just have our panel uh, give us any recommendations that they have that we can do for community action or members of the school board would like to bring up specific
specific areas of the budget that they think uh, we haven't addressed here tonight, or just any closing comments you have. Thank you. Well, thank you, and thank you for coming out. Thank you for having us. Um, you know, as this moves forward, you know, again, you have our commitment of, of we're trying to work together and, and get a, a good, amicable uh, solution to this problem without without stalemate. Uh, your help is, is also at, asked for and needed uh, to do that same. Uh, thinking outside the box, as Paul and, and the other gentlemen have talked about, uh, and, and hopefully once is a short-term scenario, uh, this hopefully this, this uh, funding and the, the fiscal <coughs> crisis uh, eliminates itself in the next couple of years, uh, but uh, you, you never know what happens. But the definitely, like we do on everything else, is trying to find other ways to do things to still get the, the end result. But, uh, you know, your commitment in being here shows that you're interested in, and you want to see some good things happen for your children and for your community. So I, I also thank you for that. And I'll echo what Tim said in terms of thanking everybody for, for coming out and allowing us to kind of start a discussion. Um, obviously, this is going to continue on. This is going to be a very fluid situation between now and when the, the state budget is finally passed. Um, so as we're going on, you know, if you have questions, if you hear things, you know, keep your eyes open, be, you know, be online. There's great sources out there for information that you can, you're pretty up to the date. Uh, if you have any questions, just you know, give my office a call and we'd be more than happy to kind of clue you in. Um, but I, I think the most important thing you can do right now, if this is something you really care about, um, to, just to get active. I mean, you can write to me and you can write to Tim, but you know, I think we're already with you. Um, but we can, we can direct you to the other people you need to be talking to because you know, it's, it's a frustration. Because I would love nothing more than to sit down with you know, my, my colleagues in the House and, the and say, let's work this out together. Unfortunately, we were told yesterday in our caucus, there's probably going to be budget negotiations where we will not have any representatives in the room. As your elected representative, that's very frustrating to me. So we're trying to find ways to make some noise, to be relevant, to make sure that the voices of the people for Cherry and Avella and Burkestown, all these places, are being heard. And you know, it, it's a tough game up there, and you know, we're, we're trying the best we can, and I think no matter what happens, uh, the only promise I can make to you is that I'm not going to stop trying. So thank you very much. Speaking for the administration, we are going to continue to work on this budget. Obviously, as I've said earlier, this budget is not a done deal. It's a very fluid document. Uh, it probably won't be settled to the 23rd hour. Your administration hears you. I'm sure your board members still have heard you. Um, we're committed to making education a priority here. We are trying with the limited resources the state's giving us to make this a reality. We will continue to keep working on this, and I can assure you that everything possible will be done in the school district. I would also say that um, I, I think the next budget hearing is this coming kind of Monday, and also I have uh, Monday, Wednesday, at Monday, 6 PM. Wednesday, next week. So there was a lot of good discussion, comments. I would urge uh, anybody attending and pass on to other members of the community to, to attend next uh, next week's meetings. Uh, the entire school board should be there, as well as the administration. So come forward and, and voice your concerns, your ideas, and um, we look forward to seeing you there. Uh, I'd also encourage you to voice your concerns outside that meeting. Um, emails, phone calls, talking to the, the board members, I think. Very helpful. Uh, I, I just want you to know I heard you tonight. Um, I, I think most of you that know me know, you know, staff cuts are the last thing I personally want to do. Um, but again, I, I hope you also hear that just like your house has a budget, we have a budget too, and we're going to have to live within that. And we're going to have to pay the, la the electric and mortgage and everything else, and we're going to do everything we can to scrape everything out dig through this to see what we can do. Um, the last thing I just want to leave you with is a little bit of perspective. When I look back at uh, my grandmother taught down at the Primrose One Room School, uh, I remember when I went to Fort Cherry in the 70s, we didn't have heat. Anybody else remember that? There was a oil embargo, no heat. We, were, we literally didn't have heat. I mean, it was 40 some degrees. We had a little bit. Uh, all right, a little bit of heat. So, the heat was in the tools, right? So, um, it, it, as you move forward, as Mr. Slate said, you know, we, we've had issues in the past. Back then, they had 30 people in a classroom when they were cutting those things. So, I, I just want to show we are getting better. Our test scores are getting better. 
the teachers are doing a great job, the, the administration is trying to support them, and I know you as a community are trying to work out. When I sent the budget out, I was expecting to get a lot of angry emails, quite frankly. Instead, what I got back were people saying, here's suggestions of where we can cut. By the way, I, I can help tutor. I can help with the reading recovery program. <coughs> I can help be a volunteer for this. And again, I just think it speaks uh, volumes for this community. And again, I want to make sure that these guys here, $13,600 top rated school versus $20,000 bottom rated school. Here's where your best investment is. Yeah, I, I agree with everything that's been said uh, with contacting your legislators, contacting uh, the governor. Right to these people, get involved. Uh, be vocal. Come to the board meetings. Be vocal there. Uh, when you think back, when you were in school, and you can remember one teacher that had an effect on your life. You can't remember the principal unless you're real bad. <laughs> you can't remember the superintendent. So we don't want to be starting to cut teachers and get rid of them. Believe me, teachers have an effect on your lives. You remember them, and you'll remember them for the rest of your lives. That's not furlough the teachers. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, I would encourage you to become active and continue to write the legislators. Uh, not just the two sitting at the end of the table. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. Uh, we, we truly appreciate your support. Dire uh, times. We, we need your support. Because I know, speaking for the SEA, we give it to your, your children every day. They are our focus. Uh, they are our top priority. And we continue to be that way, regardless of what Congress um, said. I guess I'll last, though, everything that I was going to say is only what I said. But I can also encourage you to um, flood Tom Corbett's office with letters, emails. Uh, what I'm going to try to do is contact the PPAs from some other schools in this area suggest that they do the same thing and maybe that will help. And thank you all for coming out and for some of your baseball games and practice. And I just appreciate the good group here. I think we've heard a lot of good ideas tonight. And I appreciate everybody for presenting their ideas so well. And I appreciate all the members of the panel for all their input. Uh, thanks for coming. We are adjourned.